the other thing that I was thinking in my mind that I know that people never ask me about, and I, I thought about it in my mind, all six of those games that I had that were at least at 3 million, 332, uh, 820, all of those were when I was living with the Shaders. I never had a score like that when I wasn't living with the Shaders. It started when I started living there, and it basically ended like with that article and <clears throat> then I moved out to Boston before. Keep in mind that Billy Mitchell was covering uh, Donkey Kong at the time that I started this, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, rampage against Pac-Man, you know, like when I was playing all those games in my senior year. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Uh, I saw, what was it? I saw, an ar- I was looking at archives online, if I could find it. Oh, where is it? If I can find it here real quick. Oh, there is one. Was it Asbury Park in July of 1984? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, I found an archive, and it was like uh, it says Basketball who lives at 112 Cedar Avenue. Yeah, that's the other 112 address that I lived at. See, I lived at the Shaders, then I moved to Boston. I was there for five months. And then I went back in December to uh, 112 uh, Cedar Avenue. Cedar Avenue is the same road that, that Monmouth University is on, believe it or not. Okay. All right, cool. And it says, uh, you did, uh, you know, you, you, this, he mentions your 332820. This is 47,300 on Space Invaders. They made a mistake. That that told me that it wasn't 36. It was 37 and change. That's what it should be. They made a mistake on that. So it should be 30. What, what should it be? It should be a little bit over 37,000. I think if I remember correctly, that was probably done in the hobby shop in close to New Jersey back in uh, 1980. There's no other record of that event other than that. Like, I've lost that record a long time ago as far as what the change is on the game, but it'll give you an idea how far I got with that. I also breached 22,000, I think it was on, uh, uh, what was it, the part two one. I missed by, like, eight guys of uh, sending it halfway up the board on, like, the ninth one. If I had knocked those guys off, I could have continued on for a little bit. It would have given me a little bit of, uh, you know, breathing room from uh, where they start out. Okay, it says here, like you said, it you said it was thirty, probably thirty-seven thousand. This one says forty-seven three hundred. So is it possible it could have been thirty-seven three hundred? Yeah, it says possible. I think that change though. It, don't, don't you know try and quote it, but it definitely is not forty-seven. It's thirty-seven on the first two digits. All right, and it says uh, three million on Cubert and one hundred thirty thousand on Galaxia. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think I got up to about 147 before I stopped fooling around with that. And, you know, it's like kind of hard on, you know, the eyes and a couple other things like having to do that. Okay. 816, it says, uh, what does it say? He says, they were quoting you saying, I wanted to get a million on this Pac-Man, but the game inverts its screen at the 200. It says 256 board. I mean, is that something you said at the time, maybe? No, I, I they had to get that mixed up. I mean, I, I guess I haven't read through that article recently. But it says that's where Basketball got his 816,120 score. Is that correct? Yeah, when I got to that split screen on this Pac-Man. Okay, and it says by inverting its screen, I mean the screen changes colors and goes bonkers. Miss well, they, they try and flavor up these stories back yeah. then, you know, like bells and whistles and a bunch of other stuff. I think that in that other article, City Man pulverizes Pac-Man, you know, if you paused it on perfect fraud, man, or like I already told you where you can go to get that article. Yeah. Well, uh, what was the name of the uh, the paper for that? Yeah, this article came from the same place as I know. The Daily Register is not as widely, you know, was described in this paper as the Asbury Park Press. See, the Asbury Park Press is going to be Distributed all the way up and down the Jersey Shore. Oh, I found this other article. Oh, this was well. This is from 1985. It mentions you. Has a picture of you like leaning on a Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man machine. And then it says, uh, oh, da, 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 da. 
basketball. Well, there's been anything in '85. It was '86 and '84, '84 up there, and '86 down here with uh, Chris with the media. Well, I found this one online. It says Asbury Park Press, Sunday, January 20th, 1985. On page F5, it says, uh, it's a smaller article. It says, the proliferation of home video games has taken all the challenge out of playing. Former Monmouth College student Bill Bastable complained. Then it says, Bastable, Sarasota, Florida, recently racked up a score of 881,360 in a 13 and a half hour game with Miss Pac-Man. Does that sound right? What that, what that is, what that is, Bull was working at the quick stop on 4th and Orange. That's the guy, the employee that was working there when I had that game. That game was played on, uh, well, most of it or the balance of it, uh, say up to maybe 700 or 700 and some thousand, maybe close to eight, was played on the 23rd of September in 84. And then that little sliver on the other side, like Bill Orr was working, you know, throughout pretty much the evening and the night. And he had seen me, and you know, he, he called my mom, and I, she came down, and she took a picture of it, and you know, for whatever it's worth, like unfortunately, you know, Billy Mitchell and Chris Avery don't uh, give me credit, but if Bill Orr was asked, I, I probably gave him a picture of that thing a long time ago, or that's an original that was in the Quick Stop at 4th and Orange in Sarasota here, and I had 881.360. That was on September 24th, 1984, you know, just past midnight. I guess it was 1.30 or 1, 1 o'clock or something in the morning when I finished. So you started on the 23rd and ended on the 24th? Yeah, there, there was maybe about an hour or an hour and a half at the end of the game that I had to show <laughs> over the 24th. All right. Between what 1 and 2 in the morning when the game was done. And Bill Orr was the guy who was working there that night. I've okay. seen it. All right, cool. Let's see what else it says here. It says, uh, uh, it says uh, the 23-year-old video whiz thinks his stupendous score deserves mention in the record books if it wasn't for a, quote, speeded up version of the game that has appeared in some arcades. And it says, one such modified game made it possible to score 894,880 in just four and, four and three quarters of an hour. Bastable wrote in a letter to the press. Does that sound about right? Yeah, I might have gotten in touch with them about something like that back then. Like, I'm trying to think of what my score was in 85. Like, I, I might have had like 915 or 918 or 919, something like that, as far as in hundreds of thousands on the mm -hmm. turbo. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's one thing that just came to mind uh, when you mentioned, like, uh, some of the pictures. Because remember, I, when I was at your house, I took some pictures of, like, your frames, like the Miss Pac-Man screenshots mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what uh, – because I forgot what the deal was. What, uh, the picture where it shows the uh, the Miss Pac-Man – Turbo uh, had flipped over to past a million points. Uh, what, how'd that ha how'd that come about? How did that come about? I went down and I played. Um, you can see, I guess, the picture with the actual high score was like eight hundred and fifty-six thousand something. Yeah, it was eight hundred something thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you you see the other thing was a lot higher. Obviously, you know something's wrong. Yeah. What happened was that I I went down and I played that other game like maybe two days before that, and I, I didn't turn off the program, you know, and I, I got killed when I was in the, uh, you know, like the board 134 or something like that. And I went back two days later, and, like, obviously the machine had been reprogrammed trying to start a game from, you know, something that I got killed in 134. And, like, the first two boards, like, I had no change energizers, you know, with this strange quirk in the program. And as, as I got further into it, I realized that the balance of it was going to give me a lot of these boards with these edible monsters. I know that Chris Ayer has seen one of these things before, but when he'd seen it the last time I talked to him, it was on the original, and he had to bail out with rack tests every time he got into trouble. The, the monsters have no definite uh, attraction to, like, the muncher, and they're kind of floating on the screen, you know, so... Yeah, you mean, you, you mean like, they're talking about where they... Uh... 
they don't really follow you. They just sort of float around yeah, as if to hover. Well, yeah, whatever they do, it, 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 it's not you know anything that has something to do with coming after you. So I don't know. There might have been 90 mazes of edible monsters or something like that during the 133 that I'd get. And, like, if I didn't throw away a pair, a 800-pointer and a 1,600-point monster, I could have had maybe a million 420-something. I think it was, what, a million 418, 740, what I ended up with. But, you know, like, again, it, it's a, a modified program. I, I don't count that as, as something on a Turbo Miss Pac-Man that, uh, you know, is, is a legitimate record. My legitimate record, I, I actually had a 141-race game one turbo miss pac-man um i think i checked the year on that i thought it was like 89 before but i think my records are showing 88 i think it was march 9th 88 it was at fifth and 301 7 11 the only reason i couldn't get a picture of that is all of those um plastic things were taken off of the um the neon bulbs like up on the ceiling there were plenty of them so there was like a reflection off the glass of like a lot of light yeah. you know because those plastic things were off and like you know, I, I, I had absolutely no chance, I think, in there of getting that, but I, I had 966, 760 after 141 mazes. But still, when you compare it to Abner Ashman, he did it on the original, like he's got, what, at least 989 or maybe 991. I mean, this the, the guy is better than me. I know he looks at the picture and he's like, oh, you're sitting on a game where he actually broke a million. And, and I know everybody's got a fetish with that, but to have a reprogrammed turbo record, it, it, it's not official. That's what I'm saying about it. Now, when you say reprogram, basically you're saying that uh, it's like a glitch that happened because the game basically ended and kind of reset itself in a weird way or something like that. Yes, because I was in 134, 5, 6, or 7, and one of those mazes, if you get killed there, yeah, you see an H or something in the score or a G or, a, you know, some letter. You're like, yeah, that that programs something funky with inside the machine. Okay, and basically, you said the, you said you came back a couple of days later. Yeah, it was like maybe two days later that I I found out that you know, okay, this is what happened with the program. Like, you know, two no change boards, and I lost some munchers on that crap early on until you know I was trying to hang on with the last muncher or two to you know get the job done once I realized what was going on with the new program. You know, All right. Then it started showing me, you know, edible monsters, and then they continued on when they should have cut off a long time ago. And with all those extra edible monster points, it's pretty easy to clear a million on a turbo Miss Pac Man. <laughs> that would have been something. Uh, so basically, the place where you played this at, they, they left their Miss Pac Man machine on that whole time? Yeah, they did. It was in 7 Eleven at Lion and Ring. Oh, okay. So it was a 24 hour thing. Okay, I see. Yeah. Okay. They had a lot of 7-Elevens, and they had a lot of Turbo Miss Pac-Mans around in that day and age. They don't have them around anymore like they did. Okay. Now, one of the pictures, I think it was on the same one. I don't know if it's the same score you were talking about, or, but I think it said 957,000. Is that a different score? Yeah, that 957, that was at um, Gold Tree Plaza. That was at a 7-Eleven um, at um, basically the intersection of Tuttle and uh, Ringling. Mm -hmm. that I played up there a couple of times. And that, that guy was there to sign it for me. But that, that wasn't the 966, 760. And, you know, like I thought I was going to get the picture. We left and we didn't get signatures from any one of the ladies that was behind the counter when I had the 966, 760. But I think that's my second highest score on Turbo Miss Pac-Man, that, that one that uh, that guy signed. All right. So that's your highest on Turbo. And then the highest on regular was like 9, 915. Is that correct? The highest on regular uh, Miss Pac-Man original is 933, 930, 93940. 93940, okay. And the highest on Turbo that's a legitimate score, not that million four eighteen seven forty with the reprogram stuff. My highest score on Turbo is 966, 760. Okay. So if from what I'm, I mean, I one time I remember getting an email or I seeing something from Dwayne. Or maybe he posted it in a forum somewhere where it says that Bill Basswell got a million uh, on this pack turbo. So basically you were saying, no, you shouldn't be saying that because it's not legitimate. Well, I, I got it, but it's it's a reprogrammed turbo, and I don't consider it something that counts. 
yeah, well, I, under, I understand you, but I mean, we, we, you can see by the picture that there is something definitely wrong. Yes. <laughs> I was telling somebody, I said, there's a lot of weird stuff in this Pac-Man. I said, you know, upside down screens. I told somebody I played a turbo, uh, one of these turbo Miss Pac-Mans in one of these places, and I got to the end, and when I died, what happened? And you may be, maybe you've experienced this too. I was playing on a cocktail machine. I played on the cocktail machine, and I died. And as I died, then all of a sudden, I was playing a one-player game. And all of a sudden, the screen flipped, and it started the second player from zero. Yeah, I've had that problem, too. That happened to me one time. Last time I ever played at Monmouth, that happened to me. And like uh -huh. 842,000, I switched to the second player, and I had only started with one player on the yeah. game. That's crazy. <laughs> Let me see. They, there's a lot of quirks, and it depends on the letter that you get in the high score. That's part of it. I'm not sure if there's another factor that has something to do with it, because I've seen letters, not necessarily common results. Hmm. Weird. Okay, and oh yeah, I was thinking that you said that one uh, newspaper was called the Daily Register. And mm -hmm. what what city was that out of? Was that out of Monmouth or? A that was in Long Branch at Pistol oh. Pete's uh, Bar. Long Branch. Okay, that's Long Branch. Pistol Pete's. All right, does this even... Let me try to think. Does this mention it here? I thought I saw something. Uh, all right, I was trying to think. Uh, you know that letter you got from Midway, right? People have, online have been making a big deal about that, trying to say that, uh, that either you or... Uh, the other person mentioned in your letter, you know, from Valley Midway, mm -hmm. that they're trying to say that uh, this was referring to a, a perfect game. And of course, it was referring to your three 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 two eight twenty score, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you do you did you remember getting any other uh, correspondence from Midway, or do you remember sending any other stuff to Midway uh, earlier that year, or anything else? No, it was just that. Okay. All right. Do you have? Do you remember what you actually sent them, and what did you actually tell them? Well, I told them I had three million three thirty-two eight twenty, and they said, "Well, we have somebody with a higher score." And I was thinking, uh, "What the heck? I mean, how much higher would that possibly be? You know, at the time." But no, I mean, did you talk to them on the phone as well? No, I I mailed them a letter. I was in the middle of a uh, math major at the time in my senior year. And I continued on after that with my classes, and eventually a month later, the uh, letter came in with a T-shirt. You, you see me holding it up on, uh, you know, the documentary. I think. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, I looked at the letter, and so, you know, they, I mean, I remember Dwayne sent me a copy of the letter on July 30th of 2010. So it's been over seven years ago, and now people are starting to, to show this letter around again. Uh, but the letter itself, oh, let me find it. Now, did you get your letter back from Dwayne, or does he still have it? No, he still got it. I told him that the last time that uh, I talked to him, and uh, he needs to keep that in good shape, I guess. All right, let me see if I can find it here. It's uh, look for Bill Basketball. Oh, here, midway letter. Because I, I know you mentioned like higher scores in the in the Dwayne's documentary, but on the letter itself, it says. It says, although we do not keep records of high scores, I have heard of only one other person accomplishing this feat. It says, this places you in a select minority. So, I mean, the letter doesn't say anyone got higher than you. It just says that we've only heard of one other person who got to accomplish this feat, which, according to them, is what, what was perceived to be a perfect score. You probably explained that you got a perfect score according to, I don't know, how, how did you phrase it to them? Well, as far as I knew at the time, like, I didn't have the game at my house, and I wasn't in a position to explore the right half of the board with the fact that I would have to go into the arcade, and I'd have to spend my money. When I first started out, it was about three or four bucks in the game. Mm -hmm. I got the cost of that down a little bit. And, you know, when I got to the blown board, I might have seen some dots under all that bullshit, but I didn't want to get caught up in it, so I concentrated on everything else that's a normal you know, maze or a normal board, which means all of the left half of 256 and everything that preceded it. Yeah. 
And I was able to do that six times while I was living at that Shader house at 112, not not Cedar. I don't want you to get you mixed up with the uh, Chelsea right? part of it. Yeah, the, the, it's Chelsea where I was when that was going on. All right, and what was their names again? What was their first and last uh, first names? Yeah, it's Barry and Ida. I D A. Yes, and that's Shader. I'm not exactly sure how to spell it. My mom, she probably remember off the top of her head. Okay. She's the one who eventually, you know, met Ida at like some antique store that she was working at, and she's like, "Yeah, I got an extra." you know, seller that, you know, I could rent out or whatever. I guess she liked my mom enough to meet me, so I guess it was a done deal for that year. And they said they were going to never rent out after that, after they uh, <laughs> rented out to me for that year, too. Okay. I'm just trying to think here. Uh, let's see, for the score. You know who the guy next door was with the Long Branch Bulletproof Vest Fund that got me in the newspaper? If it weren't for him, I wouldn't have nothing with any anything up there. That guy, Alphonse Alphone, that lives at 116, I don't know if he's still alive because it was like a long time ago and he was like a little bit up there in his years. He might have been like upper 40s or early 50s at that point, you know, in his age, you know, what, what he was at the time. like. But, you know, this guy who lived next door, he knew the, you know, Bulletproof Vest Fund with the cops and he was like, yeah, sure, we'll give you a shot at the newspaper. I said, we'll have to advertise for these guys. So that's what happened. If you read through the article, like, if you get a hold of it, you can find out a little bit more about it like that. But if it weren't for that guy next door to the shaders, yeah. I wouldn't have any any actual credit of anything that I did in those six attempts. Oh, huh. well, that's cool. Very cool. Uh, I'm trying to think. So when you sent your letter to Midway, you explained to them, that, as far as you know, that this was a perfect score. Well, I didn't explore the right half. I didn't have really the means to do it. And I thought, you know, you'd see those dots over there. Some of them can't even be etched off, you know, the board as such. So, you know, I'm looking at it like whatever is actual Pac-Man or looks like Pac-Man. Like, I was telling Keith Swanson, I mean, don't get me wrong when I say this, but the right half of the board doesn't really look like Pac-Man, you know, if I don't mind, you know, saying something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no problem there. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Oh, what was I getting ready to say? Uh, hmm. Oh, I'm trying to think. Okay. Oh yeah, Randy Tufts. Mm -hmm. uh, are you familiar with uh, uh, the history of Randy Tufts or anything like that? Yeah, a little bit. I, Rick Rick told me some of that, and uh, Randy Tufts was able to um, get the left half of May's 256 all the way up through that thing corrected, that first 3,332,820. And Rick said that he was able to find like seven dots on the, uh, you know, on the right half as far as extra points to be eaten. And I think that he found out that they could – you know, uh, come back after the death of the muncher. Like, I, I didn't quite get that far, but, but his evolution is after 82, whatever I found out, you know, with that uh, September 6th and November 5th game, you know, like the 3 million, 332, And then, see, I, I blew it the day before with a lot of witnesses there. I came within millimeters of that 3 million, 332, And then I had a, a monster get me because there was some wall in between me and where that key was on that, that fruit line path as I went, you know, from left to, to right towards that key. Okay. It was something that stopped me just shy of, of getting that key in front of everybody. So they, 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 a lot of people had seen the 3,327,820 that I had on November 4th, and I wasn't satisfied. When I went to sleep, you know, I thought about, okay, how do I want to do this? And what I did was I went through the good half and to the bad half, and then I – you know, went across where a lot of those dots are upstairs and maybe clipped like three of them like as I was going through this process and ended up getting the key that way. But that was the day after, and unfortunately there was nobody by Sunday or there was up that late and, you know, I had to go to school the next day that, you know, really cared whether I had done that. You know, but that was my highest game at 3,332,850, and that was on the 3 plus 1. Okay. And that was on November 5th, the day after. Now, was that the only time you remember see, uh, looking at your score or, or remember getting any more points? This, uh, on the only time that it happened was on November 5th, 1982. That's definitely the day of my highest score. 
1982. And there was a lot of witnesses that seen what I did the day before with 3,327,820 come within a, a millimeter, a couple of millimeters of eating that key. Okay. Now, Remember, Mike Dale had seen me take out the whole thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, you said you did it six times. Now, and the other question is, I, didn't, I saw it, I remember talking to you before, and you had mentioned that uh, on the way to, this, to the split screen, uh, didn't you at least in some, in some of those uh, maybe have lost a man before you got to the end? Mm-hmm. Okay, I mean, did you, you you obviously you did get to the end without losing a man on some of those, right? Yeah, the first one I was able to do that with all four. Now, if I had known what I do today, I could have gone after an actual three million three thirty three one eighty. Yeah, so I mean, it's like uh, that was the first one, which was on September sixth, uh, sixth, right, Nin nineteen eighty two. Nineteen eighty two, and that was at the video loft in Long Branch, New Jersey. So that one definitely was a perfect eat as far as you knew for all the points and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, when you got to the, now when you got to all the way to the end, I mean, did it end up where you just cleared all the dots on the left side and got the key and then you just let your men die off? No, what, what I did is I, I would, you know, stuff my men in the wall, like the wall. only a good half, like where you could see it above the bridge. Yeah. Just like spiking the ball in a football game to me, or at least at the time. So you, you did manage to go out through the right side and come in and get yourself trapped, is that it? Yeah, on the good, good, you know, where the bridge is good, and then up, and then back in where it came from. Okay. And then it gets stuck. All right. And then, and then they can't get you there if they don't follow you in. So, you know, it's basically like, yeah, I'm safe or whatever as far as, like, showing whatever the aftermath is. Yeah. But in, in that instance, you couldn't move. It. You couldn't move after that, though, right? No. Okay. So I, I thought I thought you might have gone like uh, in like near the 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 edge of the wall where you could in the tunnel where you could actually move down and come out. But if you go up a little bit higher, then you get stuck. You can't I, I, I was never much paying attention to the right half of the board. My whole focus was on the three million three thirty two eight twenty. What okay. Wayne was trying to say in the documentary is that Billy Mitchell was somebody who was privileged. His parents might have bought him a Pac-Man and a Miss Pac-Man for five grand a piece when they first came out. He had access to the inside of the board. He could rack test. He could get to that last board in 15 minutes, and he could screw around with it. Now, while he was trying to play around with that or Chris Ayer, I was, you know, building the rest of my. Well, let me let me just put it to you like this, okay? I consider the most important part of Pac-Man to be that 3,332,820. The dots, I, I almost look at it as extra credit. I know Rick said it's like the cherry on top. But let's face it, you know, if you're paying to go into an arcade and you don't have access to this board and somebody else does, think about the magnitude of that if I don't really know that much about that board or I don't have its rain map. You know, yeah. like I, I've basically done the job that I was supposed to do especially in the middle of a math major. I mean, you cannot ask for that much more than what I did in my senior year. Okay. Okay. Now, do you remember you spoke of uh, Randy Tufts. I mean, do you remember what time, I mean, about what time frame it was where he got his 3,332,820 or the, uh, yeah, the additional was, dots? With, with the dots, um, Rick said, it, and he knows more about Randy Tufts than I do, so he'd be the next person to ask, but... That's around February of 83 when he said all that start, stuff started to happen. So February 83, basically, he had probably the closest to a perfect game, uh, as I mean, according to what we know now. Because mm -hmm. he would have had the 820 plus, you said, an additional seven dots? Yeah, seven of the nine dots from what I understand from Rick. Now, would you think that was from, uh, from one man, or was that like seven dots over like maybe a, a – Two or more minutes. No, he, he knew that seven seven dots existed over there that could actually be eaten, and I think he he might have found a way to uh, yeah if he ate them and then he lost a man. He seen that they were relit. I th I think he noticed that much. Okay, but he actually but um, did he actually get the seven dots? That's what I'm saying, right? Well, you have to ask Rick a little bit more okay. of this question because he knows more than I do. I mean, this guy came from Nova Scotia. I've All been right. to Nova Scotia once. Okay. I think that was in 72 when we went. 
we we drove around the island. We once went through Halifax. I think my dad stopped at the bank at one point. I think that's where um, uh, what what is that that gal? I can't remember her name. That uh, she had a stalker like uh, you know uh, give her the incentive or the motivation to make this one st- song. I, I forget her name. I'll, I'll remember at some point. Uh, you know who she is, but uh, she she would have been really young when we went through there. And then, you know, of course we we came out of the island, and then we you know just started driving around other places when we were in Canada. Okay. And I'm trying to think. Uh, Randy Tubbs. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, there's so much I, I'm trying to think of, and I know I, my memory going, keeps going. There's so much stuff there. In that one article I read to you about that guy in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me find it again. Oh, come on. Oops, I'm going backwards. Wait a minute. It says, uh, you remember the the Midway letter for you? It says that they don't keep uh, they don't keep track of uh, of high scores, right? And then it's, okay. uh, where is it? It says uh, it says. Although we do not keep records of high scores, I have heard of only one other person accomplishing this feat. I'm trying to think, when I looked at this article, it says a computer science student at Buffalo State College in New York scored nearly 3 million points earlier this month. And then it says the manufacturer of the game said at that time that it did not keep scoring records. It sounds familiar. It sounds about the same to what they told you in the letter they sent you, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Because the manufacturer, I would presumably, is Valley Midway or Midway. So, I mean, do you think that it's possible or, or some possibility that this person in Buffalo State College may be the person they're referring to? I'd like to think that it's Carlos uh, Gomez or Gonzalez. You know, the one that you found in 81. He, uh, Dwayne was telling me you sent some stuff on him. Okay. I've been trying to, to track information down on that, and I haven't been able to find it. There's one little newspaper clip that I saw and basically the, people are assuming that this clip is from 1981 because there's no date it doesn't say where it came from it just shows a clip from a magazine newspaper or book or something like that so I'm trying to to, to track these things down and people are trying to say yeah, that the other person in the letter is like you said probably referring to Jose Gonzalez and I said well I'm I'm trying to compare, you know, things that look similar to what one, they are. One thing I can tell you that's going to eliminate one of the people is, like, I, I forget who it was who was uh, reporting back on that Chinese boy who got the uh, trophy from Ronald Reagan. He was claiming that he got six million points, and they thought that he was the best player. There was another player that was pretty good at the time. That uh, I don't know. They both both look like short people. Like the the guy was like a white guy who was, you know, playing that, you know, he got to like the split screen, like you know, a really long time ago, maybe during, you know, this period. And he said that that Chinese guy wasn't even half as good as him. So when he got to the split screen, he's like, well, how is this Chinese boy or whatever it is getting uh, six million points? You know, and that's when Ronald Reagan, I guess, realized that he had an Alzheimer's moment. He should have, you know, followed that thing through that, you know, there's no way that this guy could have, you know, come up with that kind of a score and, you know, uh, Ronald Reagan and the rest of the crew had been lied to about, you know, what he was doing. So you can scratch that Chinese guy off. Um, Obviously, I'd like to know more about Carlos Gonzalez. The other guy in Milwaukee, I mean, even if he's at 3,100,000 and something, you know, keep in mind that all summer long that I was pounding it, and, you know, like whatever that little difference was in edible monsters and everything else, I certainly had that guy beat at that point. You know, I, I, I even, I, you know, I, I'm trying to think like that summer, I had to take two English classes. They were at the upper levels. They were like, you know, 207 and a 208 class, you yeah. know, and I hate that shit. I, I had to take that at some point to fill in the uh, requirement. And, you know, while that summer was going on, I had to deal with all of that bullshit going into the, uh, you know, the fall semester. And then you wonder why it came up as like the, the 6th of September when I was able to do it. Uh, now, as far as a... The, the first time that you uh, that you told me that you uh, you obviously had gotten higher than this guy in Milwaukee, but the the first split screen, do you uh, have an idea or the general idea of what your score was the first time you got there? Um, it was probably in the 
three million two hundred thousand something district. I don't think I had a split screen with three million one hundred something thousand because I was pretty established in you know eating the energizers and all the other stuff that uh, you know would lead to a what is it three hundred and forty something you know six key that you know I wouldn't have been far off of that mark and then I would have started blasting the ninth key that I'm I'm pretty sure I started at least at three million two hundred and 30 something thousand maybe when I started doing those things is probably a hundred thousand shy of it okay. I never had a split screen as far as I remember there was three three point one million something okay well the thing about this when you did your uh, your uh, left side perfect game on September 6 82 mm -hmm. uh, how old were you at the time you're like what 20 something uh, well my birthday is May 24th 1961 so that would be after my birthday in 82. I guess I would be 21 when that happened. So 21. So you were in your 20s. I mean, think. Uh, the, the only clip, I mean, have you? has anyone sent you a copy of that little clip? Oh, which clip again? Where that mentions Jose Gonzalez. No, I haven't seen that. Okay. But there is no source. There's no title of a magazine, no name of a newspaper. There's nothing there. And, of course, it says that he was 16 years of age when he did it. And if this was supposedly in 1981, uh, every everything that I found so far, I mean, even with Randy Tufts, uh, even this guy in Milwaukee, and you, obviously, and I've talked to, or not talked to, but I've seen people who uh, started the group, and a lot of it came through, like Miss Pac-Man and stuff. Like, um, I think it was like February of uh, maybe they they had started. The, grouping before uh, uh, 83, but I think they said, you know, they the first, one of the first perfect eats on Miss Pac-Man, they had developed, uh, I think it was early 80s. Uh, so it's like saying, uh, well, is it, I mean, it's possible, yes. I'm trying to think, is it probable? A 16-year-old, how much time would he have had? I mean, how long? We don't know I, anything. I, I, I agree with you, but then again, there are some freaks of nature. So, like, I would say it like Joe Kendo would say it. We will solve no case before it's time, like what I was telling you about the theory of the energizer, the Paul Vassad theory of the energizer. We will eat no energizer before it's time. More information is definitely needed on Carlos Gonzalez. Other than that, I'm pretty confident that my skills were out of the gate at least as fast as anybody else's. Okay. Well, that, that's what it makes me think of. I mean, it's like, first of all, I mean, the only thing, well, while, while I have you here, let me read, tell you what, it makes me think that there's probably something else to this. Uh, let me see, Jose Gonzalez. Now, did someone tell you his name was Carlos? Yeah, or, or no, it was, I, I, I remember, for, or no, what was it, when, when Dwayne first told me, he said Juan Gonzalez, and I thought it was a baseball player that used to play with uh, Dean Palmer, like in his day and age for the Texas Rangers, like that might have been back possibly before the millennium, but like, you know, when, when um, you got the story, you found out his first name was Carlos, but at least we had the Gonzalez part of that name right. Okay, because the only thing I've seen is this one clip, and it doesn't say Carlos, it says Jose. So let me Jose read it to you. Gonzalez, whatever, I mean, we know his last name is Gonzalez. Oh, yeah. Okay, and of course, this is what it says, okay, it says, Quote, a Los Angeles youth may be the best player in the country at Pac-Man. 16-year-old Jose Gonzalez played at Sassany for most of the day to score 3,333,180 points, the highest score we have found published across the USA. Jose reportedly ate all bonus keys and monsters inside the game before a glitch halted his play. Uh, Jose says he will try again after the holiday so he can try to eclipse the 5 million point mark. Pay attention to future editions of Gaming Review to see if he accomplishes his goal. So that's the basically the little blurb for him. It makes me wonder because it says uh, he uh, reportedly ate all bonus keys and monsters inside the game before a glitch halted his play. Now my understanding would be, I mean, the surface thing is my understanding is that if this could have been possibly the first time he got there, if it's saying that it halted my play, but he's still expecting to get past this thing. He's mm -hmm. trying to get 5 million points. Just like mm -hmm. this guy in uh, Milwaukee said, 
I could have gone for four million, which means that he either didn't. This guy in uh, uh, Milwaukee may not have gotten to the split screen because he doesn't mention it. This yeah, guy apparently did. Information. Yeah, this guy apparently did because he talks about you know the glitch. That's the only thing that would give a hint that you know this thing is. Oh, this, obviously, if you got there the first time, it's like the Donkey Kong kill screen. You said well, this might be a glitch or something like that. You know, it's messed up or some crap. But when you find out that this is a permanent fixture of the game, then mm -hmm. so it makes you wonder. It's like you know, if he may have played on on the board. Uh, what we need to know is, like you said, there has to be more information. We need to know, like, uh, yeah, yeah, how many men were was on the screen because even back then, people some arcades did put them on different settings, whether they're low men or high men. Uh, you need to know uh, uh, because it is possible to. Like you said, eke your way through the, the right side of the screen and pick up dots, whether you know yeah, about it or not. They were told, Chris, they were told me that a factory setting of 14 of those are the maximum that somebody could actually somehow come up with would be one dot shy of taking out that board as far as the dot counter is concerned. So, you know, I mean, like maybe they had their hopes up, but you notice how they never reported back in once they realized that reality that, you know, that was it. Yeah, That's but, probably what happened to Carlos Gonzalez, I mean, but the thing is, is that he probably should have known that already with what he knew, unless he thought he could somehow get into the back of the machine, program more munchers, and maybe that could trigger the dot counter, but that's that's not an option. You know, yeah, I mean, you would sort think of if put in his, his, his story to question, but the other guy, I think, just walked away when he started to realize, yeah, I can't, I can't break through this barrier and, like, you know, my score, you know, it's really not as good as I'd like it to be anyway. And, you know, he knew he couldn't get four million, so it's like he more or less never heard from the guy again or whatever. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean you tend to think if you had the knowledge of the, uh, the nine regenerating dots, you would think that he had probably done this. At, you, oh, you would think that he had been there more than once. I mean, the, the guy is 16, at least according to this uh, little mm -hmm. uh, excerpt. So it's thinking, well, I would think that th there would be a mo better understanding of it at that time if you're thinking that you're going to get past this thing. Or maybe you're thinking, well, maybe this is just a glitch, like you said. And the next time I'll play through and then it, this glitch won't be there. It's a possibility. But until mm -hmm. someone actually comes out and says, all right, this is where it's from, such and such, uh, people have claimed they they know where the guy is, but no one's ever had a chance to talk with him yet. So if the people that are claiming it, they need to do, follow through on it and actually talk to this guy if they know where you know he is. What we need to do? Can you can you get his his information on when he was born? Well, let's put it this way: if uh, let's put it this way, if he was, uh, if this was from 1981, then he would be either 52 or 53. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've tried to look up uh, Jose Gonzalez. I've called a couple numbers, and they've both been disconnected um, that appear to be close to uh, uh, Jose, for Los Angeles area or whatever I found. But these people that claim that they know him, I mean, they're either – they don't really have access to him, but they just claim they have. Because honestly, this isn't something to play around. I mean, if you're if you're going to do any kind of research and you're going to talk to this person, then do it and publish your mm -hmm. findings. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, all this secrecy and claiming stuff before you have any evidence whatsoever—that's bad journalism. Re mm -hmm. Regardless of where you stand on, I don't care who gets perfect game first. Uh, it's like this, you know, whether Billy Mitchell is officially recognized or whatever. That has nothing to do with it. It has to do with if this guy really did this, we need to know what settings it was on. If we could find it out, we need mm -hmm. to know uh, what he has to say if someone has access to him instead of just uh, stirring the pot over nothing. If this piece of uh, – uh, this picture of a, of a newspaper or magazine doesn't prove much of anything except mm -hmm. that there is a final score. I posted something online where I, I used a main – to play uh, the split screen using five plus one men and uh, just messing around. I didn't use patterns. I didn't park it. You know, I was basically just getting through it. And through my six men, I was able to get what would be considered a final score of 3,333,180.
based upon, you know, just trying to survive on the right side of the screen and just running in, I'm getting the dots that I could actually see on the right side. So I'm assuming, I said, if you can see your dots, you can assume, well, I'm going to try to go get these dots too. So if you can see them, because you know there's four invisible ones, uh, and someone else might uh, inadvertently run into them, and uh, it's possible that could have happened. So, I mean, it's like this is a possibility if you had five settings or if you had five plus one settings. Uh, it's certainly a possibility if it was on factory settings, then it would be a perfect score because you couldn't get that score any other way. Uh, you couldn't have done it on any other settings, though, because you wouldn't have enough men to get that high. <laughs> so it, there definitely needs to be someone following through. I asked the yeah, person. More, more research is required for that. Oh, yeah. I asked the person who said they had contact with this per with They know, he says, this person said, we got him. We've tracked him down. We know where he is. And I said, well, if, if you have, uh, Dwayne says they haven't had, to, haven't had any personal contact with him. So if you've had contact with him, then tell him that I'd like to speak with him. Oh, yeah. uh, I mean, if he'd be willing to talk with me. And I haven't heard anything back. And, of course, I mentioned in my email, I said, if you, I said, you have my number if you want to call me. But I, I will let you know that all my calls are recorded just to give you a heads up. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that's for my accountability about it. Yeah, you noticed how with me, I've never run away from anything. I've answered yeah. questions. I will tell people whatever they need to know about it. But the main thing is, is that other than, I believe, Carlos or Jose Gonzalez, whatever his first name is, that I believe that I got the first 3,332,820 from all of the other information that we have. Now, getting the dots on the right, well, in a short period of time, if I don't have a game or a machine at my house, rack testing and spending that kind of money in the middle of a bachelor's of science in math in my senior year, it's really impossible. All right. But, I mean, I guess one of the last things I'll say is that according to what I read you here, does it seem – well, obviously we need more information. But I want to know when he was born. That's what we, what we need to find out because that's going to tell us what year – well, uh, it, that's a house stone, so don't worry about that. Okay. Uh, I was going to say, like you said, it seems not – it's possible, but it seems improbable for a 16-year-old. I mean, if it was – let's put it this way, if it was 1981. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone would have said 1982, I would say that probably has a greater probability of being yes. correct. Yes, because everyone – the knowledge of – Grouping, Randy Tufts, uh, in, I'll show you, uh, I can't show you, but I'll tell you, in uh, one of his uh, Joystick Magazine's articles and from 1983, oh crap, where is it, Nin I think it was September of 83, no, no, it, it was, uh, no, September of 83, this is what he said, he sent letters to uh, the editor or whatever. You know, you know how that claim was from Chris Crabtree. It says that if you get 256 in your score, then you can bypass the split screen. Randy yeah. Tufts was ad addressing that. He's because they said in one of their editions of uh, Joystick Magazine that if you had 256 in your score somewhere, then obviously it wouldn't happen. But this is what Randy Tufts said. He said recently an arcader where I play pointed out a letter in the April 1983 Joystick explaining how to avoid the split screen 244T in Pac-Man. Uh, according to Chris Crabtree's letter, all you need to do is have the number 256 in your score at the end of the 243rd T and you'll never get the split screen. I was skeptical of this claim, so I tried it myself. Now listen to this. I scored exactly enough points to have 3,256,000 at the end of the 243rd T and I still got the split screen. Since then, I have also tried scores of 3,225,600 and 3,025,600 at the end of the two, work. at the, I know, at the end of the 243, and these didn't work either. I am now convinced that it is not possible to avoid the split screen. And, this, and of course, which means, I mean, if you believe that, I mean, it, by September, I'm sorry, uh, between April, what does it say? Between April and September, uh, 3,256,000 at the end of the, uh, or in 3,225,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3,025,000, 3
uh, by Randy Tufts. So, I mean, I mean, like you said, you said like February of 83? I mean, 82, was it 82 or 83? Well, in Randy Tufts' case, um, Rick was saying that it was um, February of 83 was when he uh, kind of started to peak. Okay, so he got like the three... Uh, Three, three, two, eight, twenty, or uh, and also the seven dots after that. Mm-hmm. So I mean, he had already been breaking the three point two by September of, uh, or probably between April and uh, February uh, of eighty three. So, and then thinking about that, all these things that are going on, and saying, oh, the split screen, how can you avoid it? And another uh, joystick magazine from uh, January of that year. This, uh, let me find it. God bless America. This is what it says. Oh, at, at, that, at that point, the right half of the screen becomes covered with colorful collage figures and characters that hide the dots and distort the shape of the maze. This is the screen. Since the normal ninth key pattern won't work for that board, it's the end of the game for most players. We've heard that some players have generated patterns that get all of the invisible dots, but we'll believe it when we see it. So it's, I mean, by at least January of 83, people knew about, at least, whether it was through Rack Advance or not, that there were invisible dots there. At least that's what it seemed. Uh, because they show a picture of the split screen on that very same page, and you know the Rack Advance, it has a score of 76, 230 for both 1-up and high score. Yeah, and, and now it you has, know how they're getting what they're getting. I never had that. Yeah. And you've seen how fast I, I assembled the other 3,332,820. Yeah. Well, the thing is, they, they the people at Joystick at least had the knowledge. Uh, apparently, they had rack advanced before to test out the so-called 256 thing, uh, but that didn't work. This shows a picture of five plus one men on a split screen with uh, seven six uh, three twenty, which means they rack advanced there. So it's possible they they experimented as well and saw that you know there was dots on the the right side of the screen. Uh, so I mean, of course, this would have had to this would have had to been co- completely separate from Billy and Chris Ava because they said they never told anybody about it until later. Yeah, it was separate because that was before they peaked in '84 and '85. Yeah. Well, Chris said that they did it. Billy did, Chris said that he did it in '80. Billy did it in '83, and then he did it in April of '84. That's what he told me. The score was 874, and then you beat it and you got 915, 180. Well, I, I beat that score. Remember what I was telling you about Bill Moore working there in the quick yep. stop at 4th and Orange? In 933. No, that was when I had 881, 360. And that was on regular speed. 360 was when I first exceeded Chris's score. My former record, I think, might have been like 844, 780 or something like that, that I had that at Southgate Lanes. Okay. I remember Bill Harold and his, his bowling team were there when I did that. And then, I don't know, it was a little while later that I finally started playing at the quick stop. And, you know, I broke my record by a decent amount. And it was enough to take out that 874, 530. I had 881, 360, or at least when that picture was snapped anyway. It could have been a little bit more than that. But what happened was it, it did that 64 credit sound. We go, do, 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 you know, and then the moment that it stopped, Adding that 64 credits to clear memory, and that's how that happened. Yeah. When that that game on September 23rd and September 24th back in '84, the Bellor was working there that that night. He could testify if he remembers that it was a three plus one and an original Miss Pac-Man, not the Turbo Miss Pac-Man, because that's how Chris was trying to screw around with me. He's like. Uh, well, uh, oh, it must have been a turbo instead of a regular. I mean, you know, Chris can really piss somebody off. And it's like I could look at Chris and I'd say, I have consistently outscored you in turbo and original. Your your scores. Now, you said the September 23rd and 24th game, that was the 881 or was that the 933 game? 881-360. 880, All right. Now, when? Oh, That's no. an 84, and Bill Orr was working at that location at the time. That's the name of the guy who was working there that's seen it. Yeah. That could verify it. Okay. I'm just trying to get this straight because I've got numbers. Uh, uh, the 933, 940 was on what date? Um, let me uh, 
get back to the uh, thing so I make sure that I, I think I remember what it was, but I have to make sure because it's written down. I don't remember everything off the top of my head. <clears throat> Let me see. Yeah, 933, 940. It's 135 mazes, November 17th, 1989. 17th? Pac Man original, 3 plus 1, at my house. And that was on an original factory speed and everything? Mm hmm. 3 plus 1, original okay. Miz. All right. And how long would you say that took you to play? Um. I don't know, maybe probably at least 10 or 11 hours, probably a while, nine hours, something in that range. All right. Now, the one that I mentioned in that article that said 13 and a half hours. Yeah, I wasn't uh, as good back then. Yeah, that was an early, I'm trying to find it, the early one that was, uh, hmm. Let me get out of my way. Oh, crap. Sorry, i got to try to find this thing again. Oh. Uh, Oh, it was eight. No, that's right. The 881, 360, and the 13 and a half hour gain of Miss Pac Man. That's what it says in the article. Mm -hmm. So that was the, the 881 that you're talking about, the one that on November 20th. Oh. Keep moving these things around. November twenty, uh, September twenty third and twenty fourth. Uh, that one took about thirteen and a half hours, in right? Mhm. Mm so that was eighty four, and then five years later, you got the nine thirty three, nine forty. Well, actually, there were other games in in the middle of it. I know, um, in nineteen eighty nine, I also had a game of nine twenty five, and or I mean nine twenty nine and change. And I, I know that there were other other scores, like you know, somewhere in between there, but the the main focus that I have is that, that first score where I ended up exceeding Chris and he never was able to catch up since then. That was that quick stop score. The 933-940 was the best that I ever had in the original was here at my house, and that was well before he ended up getting 920, not to mention he was 5 plus 1 on his game, not oh. 3 plus 1. And then, of course, way before... He had that 96, like in 91. I was on TV. Danny was able to do that for me, and I had 915, 180. And I know if you get, if you got a hold of the article, it says that I got a perfect game. I missed one cherry. They didn't they didn't quite get that right. I missed one cherry during the game. The final score is 915, 180 after 133 mazes are cleared on 134. So just reset after you got cleared the 133rd board. Mm hmm Okay. Oh, uh, every time I every time I've played uh, Miss Pack Turbo on uh, on my original uh, upright cocktail here, every time that I've played it, I've, it always goes 133 and then reset. And well, I noticed that I noticed that about a lot of them too. But you know, if you played enough of them, you might get lucky at some point. But I just don't think that that's the hope of the future. Other than you can clear the board a lot easier with a faster muncher when it's upside down on 134, 5, 6, and 7. Very occasionally I've done that on the Turbo uh, Miss Pac-Man. They've always been coin-operated uprights. I, I admit that they're rare, but I, I've had a couple of them go through. You know, with, with, with probably what you're looking at is the same program, but like, yeah. You know, what I want to find is I'd like to find an original program. Like the one that I had at my house, they actually had right side up boards. But you could only get three of them. You couldn't get the fourth one at 137. It would clear by the time you got to it. Yeah. It would either give you zero or one or two or three of them. It wouldn't give you the fourth. Yeah. That's, that's the machine the way it was set up when I got the 933, 940. Well, the only time, though, of course, I've only played a Miss Pac-Man uh, factory speed to the end, to the kill screen once, and I, and I only got to board 134 because it was like a semi-invisible uh, maze, but the maze itself looked like it was a Pac-Man maze instead of a Miss Pac-Man. And yeah, uh, you, get those, you get those glitches too, where yeah. it's got both of them in play. Yeah, and then of course my score was only 825, 220, which means I had horrible fruit. I only missed, I think, 2100 points in the whole game. And I only got eight, still only got eight hundred twenty-five thousand two twenty. 
<laughs> well, you'll have a lot of scores that'll end up in the 840s and the 850s, and when you know you got a good game, it's going to be a lot higher than that, or you might get the extra boards that normally might terminate, and then you're lucky enough to get through them or something. A 29-year-old Sarasota man says he may set a Guinness World Book of Records tonight. Bill Bastable put a quarter in a Ms. Pac-Man machine at 11.30 this morning and finished the game nine hours and 45 minutes and 133 mazes later. His score, 915,180. That beat the old record held by a Miami man by 40,000 points. Bastable says his biggest worry was the Pirates' Cove where he was playing would have to close before he beat the record. As it turned out, that wasn't a problem. He says when the maze hit 134, it was upside down and the machine automatically cleared itself. No other word on that other than must have just given up. <laughs> I don't know.